Deirdre Carroll joins us now live from Irish Distillers. She's the blender there. Marty, what a guest we have today. It's an absolute pleasure for me to have Deirdre on here again because I met Deirdre when I was doing the Irish Whiskey Academy course. Um, I was just starting out doing stuff in whiskey and I'd sort of done stuff before and I, I went down to Middleton. Um, you're always a little bit apprehensive of these things because when you go in, people are going to come in and then start quizzing you. But, you know, you sort of, you, you don't know what they expect. Um, in walked this young girl who was very intelligent, very, very easy to talk to, et cetera, et cetera. Normally with whiskey, you're expecting some old guy whose grandfather was the cooper and so on and so forth. And it was just a total change from what I was expecting. And she came in and she was chatty, and very knowledgeable, and it made the whole thing much, much better. And it's a pleasure to have her here today. Deirdre, thank you very much for joining us. Hi, Marty. What an indu- introduction. Um, it's good to see you again, a little bit different this time. And Justin, thanks for having me. I feel like I know you already from looking at all of um, the Instagram lives since October. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Actually, we've just qualified for LinkedIn Live as well, so we'll be plaguing you on another platform. <laughs> on another platform. Great. I look forward to it. This is a big event for Justin. He was telling me all this, all about it. He, he always forgets I'm not that interested. <laughs> to be honest. He gets very excited. I'm not that bothered. I'm much more excited than whiskey. Now, whiskey. for anyone who doesn't know or hasn't read the news about whiskey news and so on, although we did put it on the show, Deirdre has got a promotion. She's now <laughs> a blender down in Middleton, down for Irish Distillers. So, Deirdre, how did it come about? How, what's your background? Tell us your background. So I hold a degree in food science and technology from University College Cork. I also studied with the Institute of Brewing and Distilling and have a diploma in distillation. And I joined the Jemison Engineering Programme in 2012. I worked, got a great foundation about the whiskey making process here. I then became a process technologist. So, so basically what you're saying is, Deirdre, you're as much a scientist as you are an artisan if you're a food technologist. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, so when I was a process technologist, I got, I spent a lot of time with the wider team commissioning um, the pot stills, but also the column stills. And then for the last four years, I've worked predominantly with Kevin O'Gorman on um, in maturation. Um, so myself and a wider team of 61 people, we manage 1.7 million casks so we oversee the filling and um, the emptying of these casks and then yeah um, as you mentioned I am um, newly appointed blender so looking forward to getting uh, stuck into that. 61 people divided by that many million it, is, <laughs> it, it would take you a lifetime to count them even. I know I know. <laughs> Justin, I do it on a smaller scale. I don't bother with the filling, but I empty the bottles. So I'm I'm I I am i am am very much an amateur at this, you know, very much an amateur. Now now that you're a blender, what mm-hmm. does what's an ordinary day? What does a blender do for people that wouldn't be from au fait with what a blender does? Uh, and how do you go about it? So I still have my uh, feet in both camps at the moment. I'm training in Brona, who's replacing me, um, but trying to get as much knowledge from Billy Lighton, the master blender, and Dave McCabe, um, a blender also here in Irish Distillers. But as you can imagine, a lot of the blender's role will be to do with uh, sensory analysis. So from a quality control point of view, um, we are nosing casks. Um, So any of the new distillates or any of the new cask types, we're seeing how the the liquid is maturing over the years. Um, But then for production um, sensory analysis would be the brands that we know like Redbreast or um, the spot range, we're trying to make them consistent. So we're looking at age profile, cask profile, um, and we're just making sure that the brands that you know and love, we're getting them batch on batch. So a lot of it is to do with 
stock management as you as you can see we have 1.7 million tasks <laughs> um, so your nose will be tired at the end of the day so I, I assume there's a lot of excel spreadsheet involved in, on in the whole process as well yeah <laughs> just to try exactly. just to try and manage all of that right yeah i'm going to pick i'm going to take a whiskey here uh right and i'm going to you talk me through a, a nosing from a blender's perspective because it's different okay. whenever different when you're doing a whiskey review as a sort of end user mm-hmm. but as a blender it must be a different process so mm-hmm. i have i don't have Glen Cairn, I have a capita glass because i know you all use capita glasses yes. um, yeah um i'm interested have, to see what you're going to pick i'm going to pick Re- red breast 12 cask strength because oh, it's lovely okay mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. I will put in a little drop. And handily enough, we have some water. Okay. Water, yeah. I was about to say with cast strength, um, now, the addition I, I, of water. I have to just check to see what that says. 57.2%. Okay. So, mm-hmm. so as a blender, I think that's probably a fairly standard measure. Maybe, maybe mm-hmm. not a bit short. But. So how do I do this now from a blender's perspective? From a blender's point of view. So what we'll do is we'll send um, a sample request to one of our trusty colleagues in the warehousing department, and they're going to come with um, the different components that will be brought into um, the likes of Gem- or Redbreast 12. Um, so that will be like a, sh- a sherry cask, um, uh, a first fill sherry cask with one of our distillates here. And then what we'll do is we'll nose them to make sure that they are consistent and a sherry cast. Typically, we're going to be getting um, nutty notes, uh, really rich sultana mm-hmm. notes. Um, so we're from a blender's point of view, we're looking at all the different components. And then what we'll do is we'll make up a composite here. Um, so the likes of red breast we'll make up a composite of the different percentages of the different types of casks and then we'll nose that and often what I do is I do a really slow inhale and because you're often met with notes at the start and then notes at the end Um, so for this we're looking for that typical Christmas cake so you're looking for nuttiness um looking for sultanas raisins and yep. it's quite fruity from the pot still yep as yep. well that, that nice little spice for Christmas cake type spice coming off it as mm-hmm. well it's yeah is it, for anyone for anyone who doesn't know what a pot still is because I have to, we get we got plenty of viewers from all across in Canada and America oh, and stuff okay. and mm-hmm. lots of them don't actually we keep plugging pot still, but we just have to keep reminding pot stills. Uh, the mash bill is malted and unmalted barley. When the unmalted mm-hmm. barley gives it that little bit of spice, so it's a different, it's a PGA product to Ireland. So, mm-hmm. and it also gives this creaminess, this mouth coating texture to the whiskey. Yep. So once you taste it, um, it's almost this mouth puckering, lovely mouth coating texture to the whiskey as well. Yeah. So. Now you've got a, a cask strength in the glass. Um, what do you do now as a blender? So as a blender with exactly that composite sample that I was talking about earlier, it would be cask strength. And what we find when nosing um, a whiskey by adding uh, water, you're bringing down the, the alcohol content. So did you say that was in its, its high 50s? Um, so by bringing down the alcohol content, um, you're allowing the natural aromas, but also water binds to the alcohol, so it opens it up, um, yeah. and the flavor components can often change, which I'm always amazed at. Only the tiniest drop of water will completely open up and change the palate. So I think when you add the water to this particular one, um, I don't have it in front of me, I'm a bit jealous now, um, but it, it makes it a lot more fruity. And what would you take the ABV down to? Um, for for blending, we typically bring it down to, um, t- we cut it half and half. So um, you can just add the same amount of volume of water, but for new distillates coming from from the plant, we would bring it down to twenty percent. 
So I'll put, I'll put in a lot of water into this, but it would be considered a lot of water. So I'll put in, say, four teaspoons, and that'll yes, take it down. Yeah, but, that would be... but for, for, for tasting this, you'd be probably bringing it down to its high 40s. You yeah. know, but for, for blending purposes, we're bringing it a tiny bit lower to see if there's anything that we don't want. So, you, so once you start put, putting in the water, you're really looking for off notes rather than... Are you looking for off notes rather than the constituent parts of what would be going in the bottle is, is that what I'm uh, correct we're looking for anything yeah that undesirable um but also for the likes of red breast we're we're trying to keep it consistent so what might be desirable in another whiskey we're trying to keep it very consistent with what red breast 12 is for the consumers yeah so do you have a score sheet do you, you know do you have tick 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 uh, this is this this is it predetermined or do you, you know what way does that work do you write down how many different flavors are you do you get from a nosing as a blender um so as i said we're looking at it um we're looking at it in the composite in the constituents um so all the different ingredients we've separated them out in the different cast types and we're nosing these casts singly so it depends on what if we're looking at um, an ex bourbon barrel that will go into red breast, or if if we're looking at a sherry, we're looking at them individually, and then at the end we're we're making sure you're comparing it to um, a red breast cast strength that you'd have as a sample. As a sample. Mm -hmm. Now, I've done the nosing. I've no off notes because I'm actually just about to taste this. This is the, this is where I'm going with this. So. Now, you feel a bit hard done by Justin that we don't have. Um... He does this all the time to me. <laughs> he, he, does this, he gets he gets sent the samples and I don't get sent any. And I'm sitting here going, "What, <laughs> what am I going to do? What am I going to do?" He, he does this every week, nearly. I'll just I'll just... just say I bought all of this. By the way, Justin, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get sent any of this. Right. Now, now I've done the nosing. Mm -hmm. now, now, now do I taste? Now, now can we take a taste? Of course, yeah, okay. we wouldn't deny you that. Mm. <laughs> that is wonderful now. Yeah, it's really, it's really good. Yeah, now, it really reminds me of um, of of Christmas. I, I I suppose it's it's my dad's favorite, so I I dare not go home at Christmas <laughs> with without a bottle of it. <laughs> I can't imagine. I can imagine you got requests for lots of this. Oh, yes. you, tell me this. Could any chance you could get me a bottle of X, Y, and Z? Do you know? Yeah, yeah. So now you've tasted it. Mm -hmm. Again, is it the same process? Is it the same? You're taking checking the for off notes, maybe more than than what you're expecting. You know, what way does that work? Yeah. Again, so you're 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 checking for off notes. You're checking and. Um, again, it's just coming back to the flavor components that you expect out of a red breast, you know, 12 year old. And as you can imagine, we're using natural products. We're using casks, you know, that that vary, you know, from year to from year to year from different wood types. <laughs> so you're making sure that the, the product is consistent and then the correct percentages of those Um but yeah, I, I think it's it's a combination of you're looking for off notes, but it's a, you're also just trying to keep it consistent. So yeah. with the red breast that we know and love. Yeah. <laughs> so once you have your data, once you have your, your the, the data that you expect everything to be and checked it for off notes and done that, then you take it under an Excel, I assume. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. your, you'll go for your cask, you'll go for tick, 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 that's, that's it, that's it. Mm -hmm. Do you give do you give it a score? Do you do you mark down? Is there what way do you do for that? Uh, you you we don't give it a score. It's it's just it's 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 good. It's it's consistent and it's it's ready to to be bottled. Um. So then, when it comes in 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 its recipe, let's say, um, to where it's being um disgorged or or dumped as we call it, we have our whole <laughs> our own. <laughs> Um, we we bring it to the warehouse and then it goes through um, so as a blender we'll pass it but then it will go through into a big vat and there again we have a sensory panel on site and what they'll do is they'll nose it again for off notes um, so it's nosed 
twice when it's put into a vat and, and mixed all together. Um, and then afterwards, uh, before it's put into a tanker to, to go to water for it to be bottled, it's actually nosed three additional times from our tasting panel, um, just to make sure that nothing was picked up during mm -hmm. the process. Have you actually ever blended something and then had to pour the whole thing down the drain? Does that <laughs> happen? Find a happen. Uh, it's it no, it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> thankfully, <laughs> I okay. think um, I think with our noses and the noses that have gone before us, we have um, we have noted uh, it before it gets to that stage. Yeah. Thankfully, and you can you can often reject a cask um, prior to getting to that point. You know, yeah. um, I think one of our biggest things is because. Um, Irish whiskey, if let's say if we have a four year old whiskey um, or a component um, and you have to make sure not to add that component to an age statement product like like Redbreast or um, because that's 12 year old, it automatically becomes yeah. three years old. Um, so you have to be very <laughs> careful when you're, yeah. you know, you'd want to have your coffee that morning when you're <laughs> doing blending. Yeah. Just make sure. Now, mm -hmm. now, Irish distillers have a, a vast range of products, okay, and getting bigger by the day. There's a new mm -hmm. Method of Madness launched this morning. Mm -hmm. um, now, what, what's your personal favourite? What's your, what, what, what one would you, what do you reach for? What if, do I reach? That's a, yeah. that's a I, I knew you were going to uh, to ask me this question, um, and I'm sure you have asked me this question before <laughs> when we met back in 2016. Um, it it genuinely depends on the occasion. For me, as I as I already mentioned, you know, a, a red breast 12 cast strength at Christmas. Um, although my dad has started to push for getting um, a red breast 27 year old next Christmas. Um, so his palate has, <laughs> has changed. Um, his taste has become more expensive is what you mean. His taste has become more expensive, <laughs> exactly. Um, but I, I suppose St. Patrick's Day, um, I opened um, a, a yellow spot 12 year old. Um, I reach for that. I don't know whether it was because it was the first St. Patrick's Day that I can remember that was sunny. Um, and it reminded me of uh, of the Malaga cast that we use in it. Maybe I thought I was in Malaga, but <laughs> it really depends on the yeah. occasion. Yeah. Like a, a, fr a Friday afternoon after a week's work, you know, I, I love a Jemison Black Barrel or I might do a, a Jemison Black Barrel Sour. It, it really... Yeah depends on the occasion i tell i tell people this as well um i mean this red breast is a, it's a nighttime whiskey it's a it's mm -hmm. a sort of autumnal nighttime you're sitting at home with the fire with you the know, fire that's kind of what this is for mm -hmm. i i think yellow spot is the best of the spot range if i'm honest i think it's, I think mm -hmm. it's the best by by a margin uh mm -hmm. that's how i would consider it so i'm glad you I'm glad, you said, I'm glad to hear you saying that but it is it's all, all subjective now david mentioned i mentioned earlier on about the whiskey of carrot i have my certificate here I've, I've, Your certificate? my certificate and actually the the academy blend mm -hmm. i don't have any certificate or any or any gift bottle because I know nothing about whiskey. I'm the person that Marty uses as a foil to teach people about whiskey here. <laughs> I try and you'll have to come down to us to the academy, Justin. That yeah. would break the pre entire premise of the show <laughs> then if I actually had been on a training board. Yeah. I, I keep trying to tell Justin certain things about the whole stuff <laughs> and it mm. falls on deaf ears, much mm. the same as whenever he gets all excited about, oh, you've got, we've got an extra two listeners in, in Zimbabwe this week. <laughs> I don't care. Anyway, <laughs> but I, I, I went down to the uh, academy and it's, mm -hmm. it's a wonderful experience because you get to chat to a professional, someone who's actually in the trade, someone who's there in the business and you get to really see behind the scenes and get to go to places that you just wouldn't get to on a, on a generic mm -hmm. tour and get to, to someone like yourself who is a professional. Now, do you still teach at the academy? Is that still going to be something you're doing? 
No, as I mentioned, um, I that was something that I was supporting in in my process technologist role. So it's it's Tommy Byrne now who is um, a tutor in the academy, um, but. I during the summer we actually did a virtual academy myself and my my team um which is which is great to yeah. have that opportunity yeah now I, I mentioned that there was a new bottling of uh method of madness come out this morning mm-hmm. for anyone who's not sure method of madness is from the micro distillery down in Middleton mm-hmm. and it's the experimental ones now this one's the French chestnut um mm-hmm. This morning it was mulberry cask. Now, do you care to elaborate a bit on that? Oh, yeah. Uh, I can't wait to elaborate on it. I, I must get off and try and get it after this podcast. I must get off and try and get a bottle. Um, I was only nosing it last night. It's um, it's so interesting. I can't. I, I don't think I've ever tasted a, a whiskey like it. Um, there's to the nose it's um, this really strong um, paprika, um, I've read this. smoked paprika, which is really interesting. And it's just um, juxtapositions really nicely with the, with the sweetness. But I, I don't know if you're familiar with the mulberry tree. They're quite small. So the, the casks um, are only 50 litres. Yeah. Um, so they're, they're teeny tiny, not use, not, we're not used to working with something no. so, so small on a big scale. But yeah, I think there was a lot of trial and error um, with uh, Finbar and Anna and the team um, who sourced them from, from Hungary. But it's a really, really interesting um, whiskey. You must try and get your hands on it. I don't know. Well, I've already Definitely got gonna... a ball. Oh, did you? I yeah. managed to get They're one. They're not sold I, out by the time I, I try and get a bottle later. I, I, think they, I think they probably are. But it's all right. Justin got a bottle as well. I managed to say likely Justin to get him a bottle. Don't you be giving the game away, Marty. Don't you be giving the game away at all. There's my bottle there. It's a virtual <laughs> one. <laughs> no, I, I told Justin, this, get yourself a bottle of this because it'll be it's, it's interesting. Because this is an area of Irish whiskey that's totally different from Scotch because... Mm-hmm. In Scotland, it has to be 100% oak, whereas mm-hmm. over here, we can experiment with different casts. So we have mm-hmm. French chestnut with mulberry, acacia wood. Um, is there, I know, you, I know you can't tell us, but is there other woods possibly being explored? Yes. <laughs> that's okay. That's about, that's about as good as you can answer. <laughs> that's about as good as I can answer if I want to, to keep my job. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't, um, do what, don't, don't do what another uh, another distiller did. They had the bottle sitting on the shelf behind us oh, in, the, in right. the picture. But luckily, um, they, they, when they lifted it, when I pointed it out, what's that bottle? They turned it around. And we couldn't get in the it turned it around. Right. Okay. Jeepers, I better have a look behind me, see if there's anything hiding. I, I don't think that would be um, your fault. But yes, we're. We're constantly experimenting. Yeah, so we have a micro distillery here. Marty, you would have um, seen it when you were down last. Um, and since then, um, our distiller Larissa has been very busy. It's a centre dedicated for learning. Obviously, all of our graduates would learn how to distill here. And Larissa then would um, has been experimenting with distillates such as oats and rye. Um, Typically with pot stills in Irish distillers, we would have used um, a mash bill of a a pot still whiskey, which is malted and unmalted barley. Um, So yeah, it's, I'm really interested to see how these new distillates uh, that come out of the micro distillery um, marry or, or mature in different types of casts that we have here. Uh, the, uh, the, the the cask selection, I assume these days, there's so many different experimental casks. Everybody's chasing around for different cask finishes, different wood t- styles. So this, all these different little parts, mm-hmm. you know, the different mash bills, the different cask finishes, the the different cast selections and so on. I mean, it must be, even for a company the size of, of Irish Distillers, it must mm-hmm. be really, really exciting with everything that's happening all across the distilleries in Ireland. Oh, completely. It's such an exciting time to be a part of, yes, Irish Distillers, but in in distilling in general, it's, um, as you mentioned, we 
it's it's just a time to get creative with all these different cast types um with new distillation you know with new distillates and it, it's Surely great to see everything's been tried now in whiskey yeah. in the past 300 years what hasn't been done that you're going to do um, I can't, <laughs> I can't answer that, Justin. But the, <laughs> but the likes, that's a secret. Um, I'm looking forward to getting very creative. I, you know, it, myself and the blending team, and working again with the micro distillery, and um, I think it's very exciting that there is um, a trend for premiumization. So people are. Are, are drinking less, but they're drinking better quality and and different types of 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 products. So it, it's it's a very exciting time to be a part of the industry. I think. Now, this was released. Was it two weeks ago? From the, the red breast ten year old. Yes. Red yeah. breast ten year old cast friend. Now I've noticed. Uh, it says exclusive. Mm -hmm. It says limited edition mm -hmm. cask strength. Batch one. Now they're going for the collector's market a bit here. Now let's be fair, because mm -hmm. this is this is a very box ticking exercise for the collector's market. Now it's come out. It's obviously got the new branding and new imagery on it. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm honest, I I would prefer the twelve year old. I thought the twelve. I think the twelve is better than the ten. But that's just personal preference. Mm -hmm. Now on the back, on the back it says to celebrate the thirtieth anniversary of the rebirth of Red Breast because it disappeared for a while and then. Irish distillers took it up again. Master mm -hmm. blender Billy Layton and blender Dave McCabe. Now, I want to see Deirdre O'Carroll's name on one of these, some one of these days soon. That's what we're mm -hmm. looking for. We That's want one of these. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what we're looking I know. for. <laughs> uh, yeah. Now, if you had to, if you had to pick something that you would like to try or like to see or like to do yourself, what would be something that you would like to do? Um. It's you know I have loads of ideas. I, I suppose I I love I love just working primarily with um, with the micro distillery. So trying new distillates in you know we're we're trying some of our um, traditional style of whiskies in in different wood types. Um, but I'm really looking forward to seeing what comes out of the micro distillery in in different wood types and seeing how they progress as well yeah I, 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 and i'd love to see it now i'm going to show justin this is middleton very rare okay and this is a really really rare bottle of this a really rare bottle of it because it's opened mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> these are now going for really really high price now i mean mm -hmm. the, the secondary market on these has just went crazy in the last little while mm -hmm. uh now i know i know the producers don't look to the secondary market but you can't ignore that. And whenever you've got the, the, the exclusive, the birdhouse exclusive, the limited edition printed in the box, there's obviously that element to everything too. Mm -hmm. So with the new experimentation and the new interest in collecting whiskies, mm -hmm. interest's never really been as high, or certainly not for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. uh, so do you do you have a collection of whiskies at home? Do you get into that because you must have access to some nice collectibles uh, I, I do um and <laughs> i would say it's only in in the last year that i started getting into collecting but what I, I tend to do is i tend to buy one to keep and um and and one to one to taste oh, yeah. um you know just to it's it's important to open these bottles and have and have a taste um, I would love to open them, but Marty keeps on telling me to buy them and sit on them for 10 years. I've got to wait you only buy one. for 10 years. 10 years. You only buy one. And there's always, I always have some, if you want to taste them, Justin, there's always ways of getting you a taste of them. Don't worry about yeah. that. We'll get you sorted. Because mm -hmm. the bottle of shares and all the new groups and stuff. I, I'm actually a fan of this. And I don't know what sort of process. That's really actually, I was pleasantly surprised by that. I, mm -hmm. thought, it was, I thought it was an awful lot. It punches well above what I expected it to be, if I'm honest. Yeah. Um, I really, really like that. It's really, uh, yeah, the Jameson Cold Brew. Mm -hmm. The Jameson Cold Brew. Now, I'm really looking forward to the day that your name's on one of these bottles because I can, I can see it coming. I can, I, I, I think the likes of yourself 
with um, with new sort of vision and new eyes. And you're moving from the sort of science area into the blending's more of an art. You know, we, we sort of see it as more of an art than than, mm -hmm. than science. And you're moving across into that with these with new ideas and new eyes. And I'm really looking forward to that and uh, what coming in the future. But I will have to just bring up a point. When I was down at Middleton and we were doing the course, you get a little bus. Bus takes you up into the, the warehouses and you're you're like this walk and then just these thousands of barrels of whiskey and the smell and the, you get to taste the port pipes and stuff. It's amazing. But on the way back, there was bunny rabbits running about. And Deirdre, oh look, bunny rabbits. She got very, very excited by this. Uh -huh. and I told her that very near where I live, you have these. These are golden hairs. And they're they're golden. When you see them in the sun, they shine and they've got bright blue eyes. So yes. I, I thought I was I thought I would show her a picture. These are on Rathen Island, which is just around the corner from me. It's obviously an mm -hmm. island, so it's a, just around the corner and a bit of a boat ride. <laughs> That these are let's pull it up full screen there for us, Justin. All right, oh. I'll, I'll pull the best. Oh, the blue eyes, the yeah, bright blue eyes. Look at that there. Yeah. So I did. Uh, thank you for sharing with me. I did. You know, I, I, I do believe you, Marty. But I did think that they could have been photoshopped when I googled them. So I'm as I'm a scientist, I have to see everything with my own eyes to to believe it. Yeah, that's that's especially because. Have you a, seen one, Justin? I actually have. I actually did the interview about 20 years ago about the March hares, and it really is a thing that they come out in March yeah. to fight, uh, and that's why they're associated with the March and the East okay. and stuff like that. They're, although it's but, funny, rabbits have taken over. They're but, beautiful. They're, they're, they are they're, beautiful. They're massive. They're absolutely well, massive they're, things. They're massive They'll things, have to but... come up next March, so that's the best time to, to see them. Yeah, You're always more than welcome. Deirdre, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Um, I wish you every success. I, Thank I, you. Well deserved. I think you're a fabulous girl. You're really, really knowledgeable, intelligent, and clever in what you do. And I wish you every success. And hopefully we'll speak to you again soon. Hopefully. Thank you. It's a lovely way to, to spend a Thursday afternoon. <laughs> All right. Thank you very yeah. much. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.